house, right? That <coughs> house was nuts. We were almost on the top floor. Where were we on the top floor? We, we could see everything on the strip. It was, yeah. it was like, yo, yo we man. Saw it. Panoramic was, views it was great. Yeah, the the race cars, the 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 penthouse, everything we did, the the whole jet, jet skis, the jet yo. skis, going out with the bike crews. What's so funny? Because he, he was like, ah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just excited. I'm just excited. It's I'm like he's waiting up. for a pizza to come out of the oven. Like, mm. ah, I'll be making a lot of pizza out here in Italy. I'll be doing, I do, I do. And burgers, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, MCMI, people call me LR Blitz Krieg. Um, Yo, what up? I'm Wild Child. Yeah, yeah, this is GMS. What's good? Yeah, man, this is where Hydra. we talk about this is where we talk about hip hop news, um, things going on in the culture, and basically anything else we want to talk about. So uh, I'll give you a rundown of some of the things that we'll be talking <laughs> about. We're going to be talking about um, a new podcast with uh, Dave Chappelle and the guys from Black Star, Yasin Bey and uh, Talib Kweli. Um, we'll be talking about. Eminem in entering the NFT zone and, and getting in on some of that good cash that's been flowing around. Um, you know, obviously we'll we'll be getting into uh, even more loss in the hip hop community. Uh, we lost, you know, DMX last week, and now we have the loss of Black Rob and also uh, Digital Underground Shock G. Right? Damn. Um, we'll be talking about the verdict. Right? The verdict heard around the world. Um, <laughs> You know, I don't even like saying that dude's name, but, uh, you know, rest in peace to um, George Floyd. And, um, you know, we'll also be talking about new bunch of new music and we'll be uh, going over the verses that just happened with uh, Red Man and Method Man and talking about how we feel about that. And maybe even who won. Nope. Hip hop won. Hip hop won. Hip hop, hip -hop, won. <laughs> hip -hop won. Definitely won that <laughs> right. time. So let's get into it. This is the MCMI report. Uh, yeah, Black Star, Most Deaf, and uh, I'm sorry, Yasin Bey, his new Word. name, and uh, uh, Talib yeah. Kweli have mm -hmm. joined forces with their big homie Dave Chappelle and created a new podcast called uh, The Midnight Miracle. Wow, that's great. Um, that's great. Yeah, and uh, the show's going to be like, you know, a regular podcast style thing but also it seems like it's going to be somewhat of a variety show is what i'm reading it's so, gotta be yeah <laughs> yo if, if they do things that are like i don't know if it's a audio just audio or audio and visual if they're going to do like a youtube version like we do but mm -hmm. uh man that's going to be a lot of fun they recorded this all during uh day chappelle's uh summer camp uh shows that he was doing back last year i was about to say he got a summer camp <laughs> I want to go to camp. Nah, he was, <laughs> he was some comedy. <laughs> he was doing a bunch of comedy shows out there in o Ohio, and mm -hmm. um, that's when you know they. I think that they got all of this stuff together. So it's going to be real interesting. Uh, we'll be talking more about Talib Kweli uh, later on in the episode. But right now, next up, I believe that's me. While well, I get to talk about our dearly departed brother P P H. Um, this is the fifth year anniversary. Shout outs to 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 you, Blitz and, and and GMS and to Claudia and everybody out had anything to do with um getting his street named after him. Yeah, man. Thank Tell you. Tell us to all about the people that. Who signed Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that. I got a, I got a copy of the sign right here. And... There it is. There it is. Nice. Robert um, Ph. Diaz Way. Yeah, He's man. You know, uh, he got. We were able to get uh, his name named named after him, right? The the street that he grew up on, uh, to grow on Fifth Avenue uh, in Park Slope, and uh, mostly, I can't you know stop giving enough credit to um, Claudia Imperiali who uh, did most of the legwork to make that happen. Um, she's you know the princess of Park Slope is you know her nickname because she's grown up here <laughs> like we like we have over yeah, the years. Too. 
so she spearheaded getting making this happen shout out to uh ph's wife shante um his kids robbie royce and raiden uh it's just dope that you know we were able to get that done he's the first mc that i know of to get a street named after them right you know obviously yep. there was jmj before that but he's not an mc he's a dj and then afterwards you know we we are able to especially within new york a ton of people have gotten streets named right. after them which is just Even, great for the culture right because we're the birthplace of hip-hop we should have streets named after our hip-hop legends and ph is one of those biggie smalls has his uh street now yeah, Christopher yeah, Wallace, yeah. but Biggie's not at that time right, no right, right, big that big big pun place. just got his um cool her guy his. yeah uh, Tribe Called Quest got theirs, um, you know, a little later on. And yeah, like I, like we were saying, you know, me and G, I don't, I don't know if you were there, Keith, when we went to um, Blasio. Yeah, for them to, for them to sign it into, you know, to make this. Went to City Hall. Uh, yeah, went to City Hall, and and mm -hmm. the mayor signed it into law. It was at mm -hmm. the same time that Cool Herc was getting uh, Hip Hop Boulevard named, right? So yeah. it happened on that very same day, which you know, that's a that's a big thing, like. For, for those two things to come together at once and for that all to happen. Indeed. So, you know, that's- and Shout that's... out to him because some people might not know this. When we were both do, in the process, he signed our petition that put his name like, yes, uh, Robert PhD has way and we signed his. There's a meme, I'm gonna throw it up, of uh, all these different hip hop signs of different artists. Um, I think they got one for Fife and Queens. They got a whole mm -hmm. bunch of them, right? Stacked up. Mm -hmm. And PH is, is in there on the top yeah. left corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's up. And that's it made me realize that his he set off a, that trend a lot of people were so touched and moved by that and they were like hey how come there's not a, a christopher wallace street how come there's not this right, well right, right. no they had they had to, tried to get you know. christopher wallace from way before that even happened but mm -hmm. it just wasn't they weren't honoring it they weren't letting it go through so eventually yeah. you know it might have been a different mayor at the time yeah it has yeah, a lot to sure. do has with the, sure. it has a lot to do with who the mayor was and absolutely. the culture and stuff like that because giuliani absolutely. wasn't going to do nothing like As that absolutely right, not right. he would never you know what i'm saying giuliani yeah. ain't gonna do nothing like yeah. that and you know, I think a lot of it back then had to do with the subject matter, right, of of the artist. So it may have happened earlier for Big if Big didn't talk about a lot of the things that he talked about. But also, right, right, right. Big wouldn't have been Big if he didn't talk about the things he talked about. So you exactly. know, whatever. Right, right. Um, next up, let's. Uh, anyway, shout out to everybody uh, that had anything to do with that. Like, once again, uh, really dope moment in hip hop, and definitely dope for our brother PH. Um, right, Next up, we got uh, Eminem. He's uh, he's entering the realm of crypto art and, um, you know, all of those things. He, he has NFTs coming of a lot. What's the NFT? What's the NFT? Uh, G, go ahead. <laughs> um, <laughs> you put me on the spot. I, didn't, I don't have my, uh, my notes up. But an NFT it stands for non-fungible token. Okay. The token part is like, uh, think about blockchain and cryptocurrency, right? Like Bitcoin's a token, Ethereum's a token. Um, but they don't have to just be um, symbolic coins. You can have any digital, anything digital that lives on the internet that can be entered into the blockchain and verified that this is the original and this is the first, or if there's a bunch of them, that these are the numbered, you know, collectible um, tokens and non-fungible, meaning you can't copy it and bootleg it. So like, because it's on the blockchain, which handles, you know, contracts and, and security and everything, it's provable that this is the original, okay? Nobody could uh, sell a forgery and things like that, although I'm sure people are trying, you know, people will try anything. So NFTs are collected by people, just like that you would collect a comic book or a baseball card or any item, clothing, music, whatever. And, yeah. um, but it's in the digital realm. Yeah. And they're, they're really valuable and popular right now. People make memes, they make artwork, they make songs, and then they put them up as this is one of one or this is one of a hundred like that. You got you to gotta think of it as a digital um, certificate of authenticity, right? And uh, in a collectible, authenticity is key. So if somebody makes, you know, puts on the blockchain, mints basically 50 of something, there's only that 50 of it ever, right? Uh, it, if you make a copy, it's not a, it's not real because it doesn't have the certificate of authenticity. Now I can sell these the, a one of one or a you know one of fifty, and every time that's sold, because it has the the digital you know the blockchain connected to it, 
and 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 that in that certificate of authenticity, it still comes. It's it still registers back to me as the author of it. And as the author of it, I still make a profit, even though it's getting sold and resold and resold. It can be sold a million times each time. I make. I still the the person that that minted the NFT still makes a profit, right? Right. Now, just to so, give people some some ideas before we talk about Eminem's NFTs, some things that have been NFTs are artwork, recordings, virtual real estate, mm -hmm. games virtual pets like they had crypto kitties things like yep. that um even you can have an item which is part of a virtual game universe right um all those different types of things and people are being creative and coming up with new things you know well my music video is going to be an nft and things like that yep. so 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 what's um you know and it, the nba is in on this is a lot of this is not yeah. like fringe now it was fringe but now the NBA has virtual trading cards, right? Yeah, and not just virtual tra trading cards. They have virtual clips. They they have digital right. clips L of of like pieces games. of game of pieces exactly. of games that are turned into NFTs. Now I can go on YouTube and watch any of these clips, right? But if I don't have the one that is minted by the right. NBA, right. it's not authentic. I'm just this watching. This is their exactly. This is their original footage of this dunk that Jordan did, for instance, and it's been minted into the blockchain yeah. and, and, and these things these things are selling for millions of dollars so anyway yeah yeah gay gay M Eminem is getting in on the game he is not only selling um digital uh uh figurines of himself in all of his personas you know you got slim shady you got marshall mathers you got Eminem, right so he'll have he'll have little figures probably 3d figures that um are nfts of him that that he'll be selling at this uh shady con he's doing on uh april 25th with uh, the uh marketplace nifty gateway right and um not only will he be selling those but he'll also be selling other stuff like probably comic books or, or artwork and some of his original beats which is amazing you know that's so, crazy so you can buy an original beat from from eminem and right. then and then record on it and when you do if you nft that then you know it yeah, it just keeps going or whatever that's wow, that's crazy. crazy. I was going to ask you, do you just own the beat as an NFT or can you use it and make music with that? But I'm, I'm sure I'm yeah. sure you can make music with it. Yeah, it wow. makes sense to do that. Yeah, that's man, because he's going to be selling it for... <laughs> yeah, well, no, I don't know if, if it's... If it's um, I don't know if you can auction NFT. Do you think it, it may work that way? Or can you only set a price and then that that's the price? Um, no, each time someone buys it, it can go up in value. Like that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. When, when I first sell my NFT, right? If I, mm -hmm. if there has to be a way for me to say, okay, I have this and, um, it'll go to within this hour, everyone can bid on it. And whoever the highest bidder is gets this NFT. Yeah, I'm sure I don't, they do I don't, that. Yeah, I'm not sure if you if you have to set a solid price to sell the NFT. I bet you that I bet you that's in you know that's but, possible. But that's another way how they do it because I've seen like sixty six million dollars for an NFT. Yo. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I can't believe somebody sat down and was like. You know what? I'm gonna charge sixty six million dollars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know. <laughs> well, all all you know, there's different platforms. You know, another one is called OpenSea that people use. Yeah. And all of the platforms, people can bid. And the way you do it is you use Ethereum because it's most of them are on the Ethereum platform. Although there are a couple on Ethereum. Other, guys, Ethereum other is a points. cryptocurrency just like Bitcoin. Exactly. Keep, right. Continue. And it's also a tech. We're gonna get into this, and then in, you know, probably in the Patreon. We're, we're you know, gonna yeah, have a, yeah. a crypto. A crypto you know what I'm saying? Because we gotta podcast. put people on on like how to diversify their yeah. funds. Hey, exactly. shout out! Shout outs to um to Jim Jones who who does a lot of this and and tries to put uh the hip hop audience onto uh, cryptocurrencies and selling you know, your artwork in a, in a new and interesting way that that promotes ownership, right? But um, let's get off of that. And uh, next up. I believe that's G. I believe that's G. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is G. I believe you are correct, sir. Well, two weeks ago, you know, we're gonna get a little bit sad right now, but you know, we're also gonna celebrate life and music and careers of the hip hop artists that we grew up with and, and, and love and who pioneered everything we're doing right now. So if you listen to us last week, we talked about DMX who had just passed away. And at that time, Black Rob was in the hospital. Yeah. Um, and he came home for a day and we we're hoping like, okay, he's gonna make it. And then he passed away. So RIP to him. 
um, before we could even do a show and talk about that, you know, like the news came out that Shock G of Digital Underground passed away. Yeah. So man. two 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 artists, um, back to back like that, and it's a lot of people have been saying, you know, it's been a lot of people passing. I remember like it was like February we lost Prince Markadia, the Fat Boys, and everything. So we want to talk a little bit about them today. Just give them their their flowers. You know, it's good to give people their flowers when they're here, but we're gonna celebrate them. And uh, I remember. The, the main two records that I, that I love from Black Rob um, were Whoa, of course, which was like the super mega anthem. I remember being in clubs when that record dropped. Mm -hmm. right. And that's like a similar anthem, like um, The Takeover or Annie Up from MOP. You know, like when Whoa came out, that was like everything Yo, stopped. Shut Do down. you remember the video? Wow, like, I think they had like a flatbed truck going through like Times Square and they're just rapping on this truck. You, yeah, you, that's crazy. It, it was nuts, man. And then also he had another song which was not as uh, I think it came out earlier than that. It didn't it didn't blow up in the mainstream as much, but I, I loved it, which was I Dare You. You think that came you know, out before? I well, you. I, I remember hearing about it. Yeah, I think so. Am I, I wrong? I'm 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 not sure about that. They, I think possibly I they were you. both on the same album. They were. So on I the same might have just heard sure. one single first, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, I was in, um, I was in that video. I think they they shot a video for that. I'm not. I don't even I don't even really? remember seeing it, but I was definitely MCMI in the video for that. Yeah. Cool. So I, I'm, I'm, you know, that my memories is just how that song made us feel when we heard it in the club. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, right. It kind of got you amped. Both of those records, similarly, like when you heard it, you got you got excited. You got amped. Yeah, man. You know, we saw all of the um, the stuff that was going on on Instagram and and um, showing the videos of of him not doing really well. The fact that he had a bunch yeah. of strokes before he passed, and uh, you know, just. Uh, Prayers to him, his fans, his family, uh, you know, and and play his music, man. Play his music. Rock, yeah, rock out and, to that. And then the definitely. same for Shock G. Now, Shock G is from a, a, an older era than that, right? He came out way before um, Black yeah, Rob, yeah. and he's like a, a pioneering artist in digital underground, which for the youngsters, I know y'all know Tupac. Y'all still celebrate Biggie and Pac 20 years later. It was beautiful. You know, their music lives on. But Tupac was in a group called... Digital, Digital Underground. Underground, and that consisted of him, Shock G, and some other members. If you guys know some um, of the other members, he you know. he was featured on that Digital Underground song. Um, mm -hmm. uh, which one was that? Which yeah, I get was around. us? No, uh, no, no sa same was... same song. Okay. Same song. Oh, um, oh yeah, which, same song. Which which was yeah. which was on a um, a soundtrack for a movie. I can't remember. It was a Dan Aykroyd movie. Can't remember Man, the name. Yeah, it was Bowfinger. No, it wasn't Bowfinger. I said that to I said that to my wife last night, and she was uh -huh. like, "No, it was this movie." And I was like, "You sure?" And then I looked it up, and and the the, the years are, are are a decade off. Bowfinger came out ten years after that song. What? Yeah, yeah. So that okay. song, so so same song came out in 1990, and Bowfinger came out in 1999. I can't remember the name of the movie. I'm sure so G's looking it up I for us. I pulled it up, and it says official. Um, I'm looking to see if it says the movie. Um, same song, Digital Underground soundtrack for the movie. Nothing but trouble. Nothing but trouble. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was. Uh, you know. Yeah. Sound I, like Charlie Sheen hey, movie. Hey, uh, <laughs> hey. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. The song, the song, the song lives. Sound like Will Smith's song. The this song lives on way, way bigger and brighter than the movie ever did, right? right but true. um, similarly to Jay Z being on like those um, that first record we just talked about it. What was that one where he's on another group's record before oh, he came oh, out yeah. as a solo original artist? Flavor. Original flavor. Original flavor. Can and I like you hear game? him kind of like just being a guest on someone else's yeah. concept, but yeah. rhyming. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, if you want to go back and hear Tupac, so on Pac, Digital Underground, yeah. song. No, so so Pac was, um, a, I think originally he was a roadie for Digital Underground and a dancer, but he right. wasn't he wasn't really part of the group. And then they let him get on that song, right. and mm -hmm. you know the song blew up. And obviously Pac, Pac knew that he was going to be a star, and he was always writing. And, and you know once he got his foot in the door, you know he just took off. So. Um, but it's dope, anyway, it's uh, dope that they put him on because they knew he was doing his own thing and writing rhymes. And they're like, sure. yo, you got bars and okay. For sure. But cut. but this is about Shock G, the leader of the digital underground. Um, you know, he had the, the dual persona. Uh, I don't know how many people didn't figure out in the beginning. If you were a little kid, maybe you didn't know that Shock G and Humpty Hump were the same person. Maybe you didn't know. I don't know. Right, um, right, right. And he put, he would, for those that don't know, he would put on, you know how you have nose with the glasses, like the fake nose. So he had a solid gold nose because it was all about truck jewels and different people having jewelry and bra bracelets and watches and 
dookie yeah. chains. So he right, was like, right. I got a gold nose. Top that, you yeah, know? Yeah. He was he was he was a musician, like a super musician. He was really into uh the musicality of hip hop. And you can see clips of him talking about uh, I saw a clip the other day and he was talking about how Pac rap, rap from his gut, you know, that's how mm -hmm. he rapped. And that's why you like Pac because he rapped from his gut. And if you listen to somebody like, you know, a Humpty Hump or uh, I forget the other person you say, they, 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 they rhyme from their nasal passage. Mm -hmm. And then you, and then there are other rappers that rap from their throat and right, all right. of these, all these different techniques of rapping, um, right. you know, give off a different energy, right? Because right, rapping right, from right. your gut is like, yo, you gotta, you, you gotta really feel what I'm saying. But right, if you right. rap it from back here, maybe it's more of a flow thing or, you know, the, mm -hmm. the cadence of everything. But anyway, mm -hmm. he played keyboard. He played uh, a ton of instruments. He was, you know the leader of the digital underground and, and they sample uh, parliament a lot um that yeah, yeah, sound yeah. was heavily Heavy. funkadelic yeah. you know they the, another song they had that people forget because humpty the humpty dance was such a big hit sometimes you're mm -hmm. like they have other songs yes they had do what you like that was a yeah they had do what you, what you like shimmy shimmy coco pop um sex packets yeah, hey listen when, when <laughs> let me tell you i was a little i was a little kid when 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 the sex packets album came out and i thought that I was like, when I got it, when I first heard about it, and I got the cover, and then, then I listened to the intro, I'm like, yo, is this real? Like, can you really buy these things? Because I, I need to... Well, yeah, I wasn't sure <laughs> either. Oh, it's not, it's not cool. too. Well, I thought he was talking about a drug like uh, bath salts or like uh, bath molly. Salts? Or like molly. <laughs> no, not, I'm not saying they had that back then. I'm saying... There's different drugs that your mind is freaked out. And there, I thought there's, that there's no drug that, there was a drug that like automatically that. makes you think that you're having sex. No, they, that drug doesn't exist. It's I like, wish it, it was did, weird. But... He was saying like, <laughs> you take the drug. It's like you're in a virtual reality world. Nah, you know, no. like with glasses and everything. So, so, oh, no. so, so G, you're, ask, you're asking right now in, in 2021, if that is no, actually I'm real. saying back. <laughs> I'm, I'm just asking. To be honest. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. No, that's what it sounded know. like to me. When it came out, I had the same reaction that you did, you know, like- Got it, got it, got it. And then years later, like I forgot all about it. I wasn't thinking about that, you know? So, yeah, so yeah. now 20, 30 years later, I have no idea. But um, shout out to his, his, his bandmates and everything. Um, Chop Master J, I believe. Oh yeah, Chop Master J was a DJ and Kenny K mm -hmm. was in the group, but- um, Money B. Yeah, yeah, Money B. Up. Yeah, shout outs to them, man. And Definitely. you know, his, it, a, a lot of times I remember driving one day and I saw that they were saying that he didn't tour with them as much or do shows with them, but that his brother, I think, would take his place. And in mm -hmm. fact, in uh, one of the videos where you see both of them um, on camera at the same time, Humpty Hump and Shock G, that's his brother playing Humpty. You know, so I guess his oh. brother looks his brother looks so much like him. I don't I don't mm. I don't know if they're twins, but I guess his brother okay. looks so much like him that I never you know, knew that they would interchange. Yeah, the, and that's how they tricked that's us, crazy. right? That's, that's how crazy. they got us. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought they was just like you know, shot it again. <laughs> okay, change your costume. Okay. Word, 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 word. Right. Or, or did that you know the mirror screen thing? You know. Like, yeah, yeah, you right. Know, it's it's crazy. Crazy. So now, so we know what um, Black Rob's health issues were. He had high blood pressure and he had strokes, and you know. You're struggling with it. Do we know what um, Shakti even died of? They, they, I don't think. No, nah, family hasn't released that yet. Yeah, yeah I don't think so. I don't think so. But RP to him, they got about six albums and a couple of EPs. Go research his music. For Digital sure. Digital Underground. And um, there's a few other people that, you know, also have recently passed that we're connected to. So we want to shout out and say RIP to Mums, the schemer. Sure. This not. was our people. We came up together on the scene in Lower East Side, New York at a place called the New York Poets Cafe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Poets would go there, the MCs would go there, and some people were like kinda in the middle, part poet, part MC, and the singers would go and sing as well. And it, it was a great uh, meeting of the minds of basically lyricists. If you like lyrics and you take writing seriously, right? If you're an MC, you know, and then, or, or a poet, and you take it seriously, you go there. So he used to rock there when we used to rock, and we really enjoyed his work and, you know, looked up to him as one of the, dominant premier poets from that era along with yeah, a lot man. of other yeah man he was he was he era. was a writer um he was a poet he was an actor he was a playwright mm -hmm. um you know he was all he he did a lot of things and he was really dope at it yeah, all he, of them he, he he was featured on deaf poetry jam of course i remember when he came out on oz what was ill about that role is he played a character named poet, poet, poet. Yeah. and basically yeah. 
I think they typecast him. They were like, we need someone to be like, a dude was locked up, but he's actually talented as a poet, but he's stuck mm -hmm. in this hell. Mm -hmm. And this is what he's going through, right? And somebody must have seen him rock somewhere and being like, oh, that dude is ill. Yeah. We got to get him. I don't, I don't know this. It's not like a fish. I don't know. Maybe he went on auditions and all that. But I just know like it fit his personality so, so well, well that I think they that probably role. wrote that for him. Hey, you know, no, it almost felt possible. like my boy Mums was locked up in jail, not like he was playing it's, a character, like it, he did that good a job. On my when I when I did a tribute to him on my Instagram post, um, you know, I I said because us at the New Yorican Poets Cafe, right? Even though it was the New Yorican Poet Cafe, we went there for hip hop, right? We were there right. because we wanted to, you know, get on the mic and and do our MC thing and you know sharpen our skills in that right. essence. But then the, you also had these poetry guys and some and and some of them and girls and girls. <laughs> right women um, yeah, were I, when i say guys i didn't mean gender I know, I know, but I know, I know. <laughs> anyway um that were so different that i think it turned off a lot of the mcs that were there for the hip-hop right and it was like ah oh, man i'm not into this you know soft you know foo-foo like poetry stuff i'm in here for rap even though it's the same thing regardless of whether you realize it or not right but um i think that mums was that um that middle ground that allowed you, like, you know, his poetry had a rough exterior to it or, you know, that edge that would make the hip hop people say, okay, well, this, maybe I should give more of this poetry stuff a chance. So his yeah. topics were street and his topics were about hardships and life and things that rappers often talk about as well. Yeah. So right. I think, and, you know, his delivery was, of course, fierce and it, it right. was very spoken word. Super like, unique, man. Like, he was like, style. It was like you had Saul, you had Saul Williams, and you had Mums, and they were like so dope, but totally different. From yeah, each style other. wise, they were different. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And I was just like, you know, what we gravitated. I gravitated more towards Mums just because he he was more. Was he and, hardcore? Was he harder? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it he just, felt, it just he had felt an edge. I wouldn't say hardcore. I just say he had he had more of a street edge to him that allowed uh, people rappers who you know is street culture to it was that it was an easy gateway into all of the other mm -hmm. stuff, and then allowed me to to really appreciate all the other stuff that all the other you know exactly. poets were doing. I just really loved how he performed. Like he didn't just go up there and be like you know right. You know what I mean? He, he gave was you a performance. In it. He's performing. Yeah. He was in your face. If you know. He, he made you feel what he was talking about. Yeah, man. Now, um, last episode, if you go to episode one, we touched upon um, Styles P saying, because he reacted to, to Black Rob's health situation, man. that rappers, you know, and, and artists in the industry need a union so they can have health benefits and retirement plans. And when they run into some bad luck later in life, they don't got to do GoFundMes and they can go get medical checkups and stuff when they need them. Um, and we were talking about that. But Keith, you, you were, you were, telling us earlier about something that the Grammys is doing. We was talking about like, we was also just now talking about like cryptocurrency and stuff like that. But so what the Grammys is now doing, if you're, if you guys are, are Grammy members, um, they're, they're having this panel. Let me just pull it up here. It's from their website, uh, grammypro.com. Um, in commemoration of financial literacy month, mm. Uh, the next installment of the Los Angeles chapters, but any any chapter, anybody could like join on, but it's going to happen in Los Angeles. Um, could care for the culture uh, series will bring the music community and financial experts together for a virtual conversation, right? So members from all of the Recording Academy chapters are invited uh, to watch this informative, informative uh, discussion around fundamental financial wellness, right? And that's nice. super important, you know? So it's like, how, like, how do what do you do with your money and how do you, how can you invest it? And, you know, how can right. you be smart with it? You know, what right. things to do and- yeah. And not only to, to, not as like, oh, I want to get rich. Oh, I'm going to be on top of the world and take over and be a billionaire. No, it's about how do you just make sure your needs are met? So yeah. and that includes healthcare, different types of insurance um, and uh, different types of investing and also um, making good decisions yeah. so that you have something when you need it. And what's dope yeah. is because it's it's neat, much, much needed, like in the, in the, in the hip hop industry, R&B industry, the reggae industry. And they're like really trying to get folks to like sit down and give them the game, mm -hmm. you know? Because yeah. we have these artists we love and they're, they're, so, they're so, so great and their music 
changes the world and moves people and gives us these memories like that we've been talking about of where were we when we heard this record and that record. And it's sad when someone who's, you know, on a high level as a human being and as an artist, right? But their education about finances wasn't really solid and either from their own mistakes or being cheated by companies or whatever it is, or, you know, not putting things in place for them, they end up in a dire situation, you know, right. later yeah. in so life. So. We're going to put the date up on, on, yeah. on that. I, if, I thought I had it, but we'll, we'll put the date up. Cool. And if y'all want to search happen. for it, it's care for the culture. Yeah. yeah. Right. Care for mm -hmm. the culture. So, uh, the last topic for this section of the show, um, is about the uh the can the conviction hurled around the world yeah I, I, I was looking for something else but <laughs> sure 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 uh let's let's talk about we didn't you know we haven't really gotten into like uh stuff like this yet but yeah let's talk about this man oh so, uh, you know what i mean it's like okay so First of all, say say what what we're talking about. Let's we're talking about a little bit of the history, so we know exactly, and then we're jumping. we're talking about the murder of George Floyd, right? Right, last year, May twenty fifth, twenty twenty, right. um, a young lady happened to videotape the execution of this man by the hands of four police officers, right? Um, Derek Chauvin. Or Chauvin, whatever how we pronounce his Chauvin, name. Yeah. Um, he was one. He's the, he's the main the main guy, and there were three others. I think there was uh, I can't remember their names. There's a guy named Tao. There's a dude named Alexander. Right. And Long. Derek is the 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 first one brought to trial and now convicted partially because he did the most and had his knee on his neck, but also because he's the lead officer. Right. Of those four, he had the highest rank, so he's kind of supposed to know better and be in charge and be I mean, responsible for everything all of them are doing. I, th I think I think it's more so because it was his actual knee that was on George Floyd's neck, um, and the in the person who you know put him in the the life or death situation. Um, exactly. You know, go ahead, somebody. Talk yeah, about so it. yeah, so he like was found charges. guilty on all three charges, right? So it was like uh, it was man second slaughter. degree manslaughter. A, a third degree manslaughter and murder, sec murder. second degree murder. Second degree murder, third degree murder, and then manslaughter. I right. think that's the three. Is that, is that what it was? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Second and third degree murder and then second degree manslaughter. So, and so we've been feeling like this crazy anxiety because like you watched Rodney King get beat, Eric you know, by, by six cops. You watched Eric Garner lose his life in Staten Island. You know what I mean? You watch Tamir Rice get rolled up on in less than 2.5 seconds and get gunned down 12 year old. You know what I mean? We watched uh, Philando Castile die, you know? You know what I'm saying? Complying. We watch and we Shot watch and we watch and nothing happens to these police officers. They never they held off. accountable, right? right? And so we're on pins and needles every time. Like, when are we gonna get some justice? We're not gonna be able to get our loved one back. Right, but at least give us some justice. That person has to pay for what they did. And and even more on top of them paying, it has to be an example set and a precedent for the offers. Because the old precedent is you're gonna get off. You might be in the media, makes your life uncomfortable for a while, but they're not gonna <laughs> convict you. You're gonna you're gonna be good, or you're gonna get very little punishment. You know, FTP. So we need to change that to Oh yeah, yeah. The the, the but, microphone thing is blocking the shirt. So. I know, I know. For, the, for, for, for those for those of you listening to this on audio, I'm showing off my NCMI apparel T-shirt that Did says you that, that that says FTP on it. You can yeah, you know yeah, find yeah, this shirt available on uh, NCMIReport.com. NCMI apparel guys, where you can get shirts that say FTP, aka FTP. Fuck, <laughs> aka <laughs> fuck the police. <laughs> Designed by L. R. Blitzkrieg. <laughs> Or, or free the people free or the people. anything else you want to say, More but people. you know, but how did, but the, so what Keith is saying, like we had this angst, like, is it going to happen again? Where is the most, and to be honest, I predicted him getting a lesser charge, you know, and then getting 
not guilty on the higher charges, right? Which would count just as because that's just how things that's, have been going. Right. And sometimes they get, you know, acquitted right. of everything. But I right. felt like in this one, the evidence is more stronger and in your face. So they're going to have to get them with something. But a lot of times they give you like a smaller, what seems like a slap on the wrist, you know, right. you get like a charge that should have been for assault. You get that for murder. No, no, that's it's not more true. like it's, it is. So how it did you feel like it's when they announced it? It feels like it's not yeah, how I felt it before. I was before, still on pins and needles, right? Think? But I don't know how you guys thought about it, but it's like we need expert witnesses. We need, you know, um the the the, the onlookers testifying. We need, you know, people to 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 give evidence of, of his character. It's like, you know what I'm saying? It's like we need the autopsy. We have the evidence yeah, right yeah. there. You know, right. like 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 you're saying, right? You need all of those things. We need to have a trial for like you know for a extended amount of time. Even though you have the video of of it actually happen, you can just see this man's knee on this man's neck for nine minutes, right? It should be right. cut and dry. Like, yo, you're fired and you're going to jail, like um, almost instantly. But we have to do all of these things, and on top of that, you have to put the fear into the, to everybody by having protest over and over and over again because you cannot think that any of this would have happened without one the videotape right because what if there was no videotape what if the cops took took that lady's phone and smashed right. it you know it's hundreds and, of times and on top of that a year straight of people going out into the streets and every saying day. this is not right we're not taking it anymore every day every day and not only that it was 50 states where they had all these protests and it was and 18 other countries, countries yep. you know what i'm saying plus the u.n it's like i'm like you know and and still and still we were waiting like it was and, and, and and still scared right that that we wouldn't get justice for something that and then when we get it we're supposed to be like hooray nah fam that's what's supposed to happen you kill right. somebody you murder somebody you're supposed to go to jail i'm not supposed to be like you know amazed Ex exuberant or yeah happened. amazed that it yeah. happened i should just right. be like okay i'm glad course, i'm glad i'm glad course. that happened right of course it's, it's of course. not it, you know and and hopefully it, it's crazy because things keep happening right we've had we've had so many instances since we got the the verdict in right that we don't know if the how the next one's going to go right we, we we're still on pins and needles every single right. time and if the next the next several that are not captured on videotape, there's no guarantee of anything happening or having witnesses and things like that. But 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 hopefully what we do need. I mean, this only showed that when there's an overwhelming burden of evidence and it's almost impossible not to convict and you protest for a year and mm -hmm. people were speaking out on mm -hmm. social media, pe people in positions of powers. Um, officers, politicians, a lot of people were weighing in like, no, come on, you know, the whole tide, you can get convicted as a police officer. So the old um, idea Community. was you never would get convicted. Now it's like, no, no, you can, right, but it right. had to have all these things to happen. So now we're going to have to really hope people videotape more. We're going to have to protest when these, all of these incidences, when they come out in all ways, from letter writing to hitting the streets to people yeah. platforms speaking out about it on their channel. This is like so high profile. You know yes, what I mean? We have to do this so that we can have multiple convictions yeah. in a row. And eventually that will send a message to police who feel the freedom to like, I can kind of do whatever I want. If I mess up, it's okay. Nothing's ever going to happen to me. I can go by my feelings. I can go by yeah. racism or any reason. No, you have to do your job correctly right. or you're going to be accountable like all the other professions. In the I, world. Exactly. You know, my, my thing is just that if you can do anything, right, if you can protest, if if you can have an outlet like this where you talk about it, if any no matter what it is, um, you got to do your part. Right. Or else it'll go back to them people getting away with murder. And uh, you have to show people that you care. You got to vote. You have to make sure that you put yourself in a position that they see you. Um, you know, th things can change, but you got to change them, right? You can't just wait for them to change on their own. Right, exactly. So, you got to talk to people, have conversations, so, you know. So, so yeah, the same way they, 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 you know, you, you just got to keep pressing them. We just got to keep pressing them and, until, yeah. until, until, until the right thing becomes the norm. Yeah. Right. And, and it's not, this one incident is not going to make that, but it is a start that justice was served this one time. Accountability. We just got to keep up the pressure.
and not make yeah. not let this be an exception and then five years from now we're like oh it was just that one time that was amazing but then all the cops just got off in every other case for another five years no we have to keep up be diligent the video of george floyd going viral sparked yeah. so much emotion and that's what made the 50 states and the 18 countries people rise up and say enough is enough but there won't always be that perfect storm of evidence and emotional video and all that so we just have to keep this movement going on sure. you know as we move on now when i first um saw that I, I, they they were showing another video i think the same week right dante young okay. man that was pulled out of a car uh being searched or arrested and then shot in yeah the they chest, pulled right? him over for having air fresheners in his right. you know uh, on his ridiculous like interview. and then yeah, you know yeah. he panicked and i think he tried to get back in his car and leave you know they was trying to arrest him yeah right. and, and by the way him. only five states still have that air freshener rule or or don't hang something you know fuzzy dice or something like it's, it's, Yo, it's a, so nuts a bs rule it's it, it's just a, a an excuse to to pull people right. over it's just an right. you just you just want an excuse it's ridiculous you know um i don't even know why they pulled over uh that army lieutenant yeah you know yeah uh, they, they said that they couldn't tell um his tags mm. they couldn't see his tags but mm -hmm. he had just purchased right. just now purchased that vehicle mm -hmm. You know, and he had the right. dealer plates in the in the window. Right, right. Uh, what so happened to him is he he was complying at first, but then he was afraid to get out of the car. So he had his hands up. He's answering the questions, no problem. But you know what? Just to preface afraid. that they had yeah. was trying to stop him, but he realized that if he would have pulled over, it was a, where he was it was like it was a dark not thing. lit at all. Mm -hmm. So he drove slowly with his hazards where, on, where, where he could be seen. He could be seen, so he yeah. stopped at the gas station right. with his cameras everywhere, and it's right. fully lit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Which right. is the smart thing to do yes. these times. Yes, or any time. I mean? Like you know, I'm not I'm not going to let you stop me on a dark road as a black man, where where there's no other people and I can't be seen. It that you can just do whatever you want to me. You know, the and, scary thing is a lot of places in the country they just have ten or twenty miles of dark road, so you just. Asked and, out if that's where you get. I'll be out. like hazards for twenty. He was it was a gas station a couple blocks away, so he just very slowly. He probably, it wasn't like a high speed chase getaway. Yeah, he had right. his hazards on. He moved over. He slowly went into the gas but station. This, but this lieutenant Karan Naz Nazario, right? You yeah, know, he yeah, has yeah. he has his hands up and cops are yelling at him he's like yo i'm i'm afraid you know mm -hmm. I, I, he has his hands up he's like i'm afraid and the cop has a gun in his face talking about you should be afraid of me like yeah, what? you're gonna you're gonna ride the lightning you, you know, know what's, and what's crazy is when you look at the video of him saying that mm -hmm. he goes like this with his his firearm he's like i'm yeah. like are you really feeling yourself like you're a gangster you're an right, right, right. you're supposed to be a servant nuts, nuts. A civil right, servant. right this is how they like, approach george floyd like, right he was in his car and they rolled up on him like this going to That's the crazy. face you know what i mean off of a 20 dollar that they still haven't found they've never they've but never verified evidence, if it was it, that it, evidence you know never came to trial right they didn't have the my problem. thing is why didn't they just go and check for the 21st because if there's no crime, look, then it's like, all right, well, whatever. There, there, there are plenty of things that they did wrong, you know, from 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 the begin very beginning of all of this till the end of it's it, until over. after it was over. You know, there, there were plenty of things they did wrong. Oh my God, right. so many things, man. But but you know, going back to the, he was a lieutenant, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. He's in uniform, by the way, with his name identification on and everything. Like clearly, he's coming from work or something. Like he's in uniform, and you would think that one uniform department right would show some respect to another you know when you're in the movie sometimes you see like the the local police are investigating and there's somebody who are you and he's like oh fbi and they're like mm -hmm. oh state police and they show each other id and they're like all right cool because they have this mutual respect, respect. they totally didn't have that at all in this case none none whatsoever none whatsoever None whatsoever. So, so when I when I saw the video, when and and he 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 said, "What are you like?" He he mentioned some lower, you know. He said, "What are you some special something?" Prime you know, and he was like, "No, I'm a lieutenant." You know what I mean? It was like autumn. But he didn't say it with any attitude either. Like, nah, he, I'm a lieutenant. He was, he's just like, "No, he's I'm a lieutenant." lieutenant. He was just being yeah, yeah. Guy. So yeah, man, you're right. You're right. It's messed up, right? But when I saw that video, 
I was like, something about it looks familiar. I was like, yo, I've seen this before. It was like a deja vu, mm. you know? So I, I wanted to bring it up and show you guys like the car that this man was driving and the angle of the video camera when the police approached him and all that, mm -hmm. and even him with his hands up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just like a scene from a music video that we shot a yeah. couple of years ago for you. Yeah. Let's create the song Proxy. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, it's, it, know, it's so that crazy. That song was about this type of thing. And then, yeah. It's, it's so crazy, but not crazy. Right. Because like the fact that, you know, he's in a dark SUV, we were in, you know, a dark SUV when we right. shot, when we shot it. It was and the same SUV the, too. That's the same angle, you know, right. with, with, with my hands up um, mm -hmm. in the video. It's just like, Wow, how 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 uncanny is that? But it's not because that's the same angle that so many black men are in when they get pulled over by the police. You know right. what I'm saying? Like so, and it, it's it, so typical. That's why we played it like that. We were setting yeah. up the scene. And for instance, to me, like I, I was playing the officer in that, and so it was like, okay, what would how would I look and how will my movements be if I was uh, like harassing someone? Because we were talking about police harassment in that video. We weren't talking about just an officer doing his job correctly. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm a scumbag and I'm going to mess with this dude. So that's how I approached the car. And that's yeah. how I, I, I told you to get out of the car. Yeah. And you were like, okay, I'm myself. I'm a black man in America. And this is being happening to me. I would show my hands. I'd be like, look, you know, I'd be very reasonable. And yet the officer would still be like, nah, get out the car, throw yeah. you against the hood yeah. and all that. And the reason why we thought of that, like it was the, the cliche, you know, this is like how it always happens mm -hmm. is because it's happened so much yeah. that's in our psyche in America as to what this looks like. Yeah. It's, I mean, not, it so not perfect not, that the real one happened and it was identical. That's not how for nothing, but it's happened. Like it's actually happened to you, me. You know, what I'm saying on numerous times when I'm with UG or yes. when I was with Rod. You know, or yes. if I'm by myself. You know what I'm saying? It's like happens all yes. the time. Yeah, man. We're, we're, the three yeah. of us are a little bit of a case study because we grew up together and we first started having cars. You know, teens, early twenties, and rolling with each other together, and me right. being a white kid. And y'all being black and us driving around occasionally getting pulled over. Sometimes I'm driving, y'all the passenger. Sometimes y'all driving, I'm the passenger. Yeah. But we're together. And we saw dozens and dozens of times um, the different approaches in different ways police officers would speak to me and to yeah. you. And it's not 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 all the time 100%. There's been times when everything kind of went by the book, was normal, get pulled over, I'd be whatever. Then there's been other times, quite a few, where it was clearly... clearly um, racial profiling against y'all or a permissive privilege type of attitude towards me if I was the one speaking to the officer. Mm -hmm. Do you remember and when they times tossed the been, car? Yeah, we had to get out, sit on the You street. know what I mean? They handcuffed yep. us. Yep. Remember one time G was driving, yep. he, I was asleep in the passenger seat. We were going to Minnesota to visit your uncle. Yeah. Right, Peppy, shout out to Peppy. Uncle and Peppy, yeah. and uh, on the way there, I get pulled over because we drove through a a snowstorm, yeah. a blizzard, right? And then my the they pulled us over because they yep. couldn't read yep. the license plate. License plate. That's mm -hmm. kind of like the air freshener. Like, oh, there's some snow on your license plates. Oh, I'm it's like, snowing. it's a blizzard. We just, we, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, then yeah. after all of that, they put us in another car. They handcuffed us. They had the yeah. dogs. They tossed the car. They threw all our stuff, you know. They took our luggage, our items and just threw them in the street and they do that to everybody they, they, that's how they do it they fucking no and then the and then and then they gave me a warning right so i took that warning and wiped the license plate with it right. <laughs> well yeah, show me your shirt Ron. That, show me your shirt that's show just one shirt, of many Ron. stories <laughs> that we've <had. laughs> hey yeah i mean listen we could go on for days with these stories i remember one time i was in a in the back of a cab and they pulled the cab over and when they after when they pulled the cab over they pulled me out and threw me against the car and started you know roughing me up and i'm like yo um i'm just a passenger in this car if you want to pull over this cab driver you can do that but i'm i'm in the back of a cab like what is going mm -hmm. on here right right and um you know after telling them that you know i had a family member that was a cop they're like oh why didn't you say that in the beginning i was like i shouldn't have to like what are you what are you talking about and then and, you know then they, they stop you know didn't even apologize but just let the cab driver and me go you're just pulling people over but whatever it's all crazy it's all crazy um so again as we're showing you know this video 
um, I made this I made this song proxy about you know the police brutality and and the uh, the ridiculous killings of uh, you know black men and women and I even name a ton of them at the end of the song, but um, I I, I kind of didn't want to do it in a way that just came out and was like in your face, you know this is what this song is about. So I kind of Trojan horsed it with uh, us being in Vegas right and and partying and and having all this mo you know having money and having the ability to have fun and do all of this stuff. But at the end of the day, it can all be taken away from me because a cop wants to pull me over and you know take my life just because you know they they're they're fearful of all black people or they're just you know racist though for, for whatever for whatever the reason they're not doing their job properly because your job is to serve and protect and not to um escalate situations is to de-escalate situations and, and you know not not senselessly kill people um so that's what the that's what the song was and yeah we got all of these great scenes of us you know just having a good time and then at the end the whole thing you like like you know turns on his head and uh you know i i'm i'm pulled over by the policeman played by g and you know you you can see where it goes from there uh in the song video. has a great twist because you like you said you didn't want to start off with that so for two verses rod is talking about other stuff and a lot of it is about us celebrating life and going out and uh going jet skiing and spending money and having a good time in vegas so it's like we're we're partying we're having a good time you're like yeah da, da, da. you're you're being an mc just having a good time yeah and then at the end it's like after you know, when you get to verse three it's like that's where the twist comes in so the reason i'm setting this up is and you have that one line i'd like you to, to say it um you said uh about something survived at a 25. Uh, yeah, if you ask me, I'm, I'm actually just happy to be alive because the stats read that Krieg should have been dead at 25. So at the age of 26, that if I ever get rich, get rich, even if I'm on the verge, I'm a splurge like a bitch. I ain't fighting any urge. I'm a scratch that itch. Watch the video, guys. We're going to put it up. It's fire. It's fire. <laughs> so, it's, it's a slept on. It's a slept on uh, LR Blitzkrieg joint. So go, go hit that. I don't up. understand. Yeah. Listen. See, if you ask me, I'm actually just happy to be alive. Because the stats read that Krieg should have been dead at 25. So at the age of 26, said if I ever get rich, even if I'm on the verge, I'm a splurge like a bitch. I ain't fighting any urge, I'm a scratch that itch and use all the extra life till they patch that glitch. And everybody riding with me, we gon' pack that whip and add a girl on every lap with a rack and hips. Because in a flash, it could be all over. You never know who try to roll you. The cop try to impose their will on you like it's a war. And they the soldiers and you, you just a target. It's something that they want to control or maybe they just ain't reached their kill another nigga quota so this is for ph tremaine hall and peter gellis for my little cousins who ain't here rashad and eric for anybody that died unjustified for no reason at all i'm a party in your proxy this here's for y'all for anybody who ain't never get the chance to ball we gonna bow our heads and this prayer's for y'all for trayvon martin michael Graham, eric garner freddie gray walter scott Kyle Gurley, sandra bland john croft Tamir Wright, philando castell and sterling down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I don't die before I wake, when I wake up, we gon' spend all this cake because I made it. Yeah, man, proxy. We shot that video out in Vegas a few years back. <laughs> word, word. Don't, those are those stories, Wild Child. Say, don't, don't talk about yo, that. that was, yo, that's no. that's a. The, the, the behind the scenes, the behind the scenes <laughs> for, for the proxy video shootout in Vegas is a whole nother show. Yo, we had That's so much movie. fun, man. We had so much fun out there. We was in Atlanta before that. Yeah, we was at um, A3C right before that. And then after that, we jumped on the plane, went went straight out to um to Vegas. Vegas and shot for almost like a week, right? We was at yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we was at the, in, in the suite at the... um. At the planet, planet Hollywood. Hollywood. Shout out to Carlos Pitt, Pittman. Shout out to you, bro. Yeah, man. Hooking up that, that penthouse, right? <clears throat> that penthouse was nuts. We're almost Yo, on the top man. floor. Where are we on the top floor? <laughs> we, we could see everything on the strip. Yeah. It was like, Yo, Yo we man. Saw it. Panoramic it was, views. It was great. Yeah, the, the race cars, the, the the penthouse, everything we did, the, the whole jet, jet skis. The jet Yo. skis. <laughs> going out with the bike crews. Yo. <laughs> Thank both of y'all so much for like even helping me put that video together. Cause even Malik though Williams, even up. yeah, even though it didn't get as much um, play as I would have liked, you know, cause we just didn't promote it properly or whatever. Um, that that song was just like super super important to me, and that's why I wanted to put it out first, cause um, I felt that it was relevant in the time 
because you know of all the the, the killings and, and police you know shootings that was going on and g Still was right on. g was right he was like it doesn't matter when you put it out because it feels like this is not going to stop you unfortunately like there so mok had a dream so my dream is that one day that song won't be so relevant yeah cats will be it, like yo we haven't had that in like about 10 years since the last time there was a police misconduct of any sort and or, the, or, or the, any racial the issue. craziest the craziest thing was while mixing it right and mastering it um i went back maybe twice and added names to that list of names at the end <laughs> It kept right? getting longer. Yeah, I remember. And, yeah, and, yeah. And, and at some point, it was just like, yo, I got to stop adding names because I got to put the song out. But there's always another name. There's that always added, another nuts. name. There's always you know? another name. Even yeah. even when we were so, so, so talking about um, the conviction of Chauvin, right? Yeah. That day, there's another name that was added. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hey, man, too much. The too much. And the day before, it was a lot. Too much death and and uh, stuff in in this episode, unfortunately. But um, let's get into something a little bit more exciting and uplifting. All right, um, what you got? What you got? So, hear me out. This week, right for new music, and I think this is something that we can start doing all the time, right? I want right. to actually um, go through a, a new album mm -hmm. and um, and listen to all the tracks and you know and get a first reaction because I haven't heard any of these tracks yet. But it's right. from. For this album, that this first album I'm talking about, um, I want to talk about uh, Talib Kweli and Diamond D's new project called Gotham. And um, yes, let's do that. Yeah, they just put this out. It should be interesting. And in, it is know, an interesting combination, right? Diamond D and Talib. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's dope. So I'm, anyway, I'm, I'm anxious to hear that. And yeah, disclaimer: we we know Talib and we've liked his music from the past. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> sure, fans, sure. But we have not heard this album. And yeah, true. we said when we do this podcast, we're going to be honest. We're not going to diss nobody, but if we are reviewing a song, we're going to be like, eh, I wasn't feeling that one or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, right, right. fresh ears. Let's see what, what Hydra thinks of this new Talib album. Talib, Diamond D, Gotham. Let's go. So let's take it from here. So Blitz, you, you got it up, right? So let's let's check this out. This is a first listen. Yeah, man. Hydra um, reaction video. Talib Kweli, Gotham. Check it out. But that's the this, single. What's the album called? Hold on, hold on. Get it right. Get it right. Yeah. This is right, Gotham right. by Talib Kweli and Diamond D. Because Diamond, Diamond D. All the production. It's right. not, you know what I'm saying? You got to put that's both names heavy. in here because you got to make sure that the producer gets his credit, right? That's heavy. Um, that's heavy. Yeah, man. So uh, let's listen to, we're going to run down all, all the songs? Yeah. Let's just go through them. We don't all have right, to play so them let's all. Start, yeah, play let's start with, piece of it. start with Sons of Gotham. Oh! Stretch it by Beatle, that natural elements was the jam, man. Natural yeah, yes. E, those are yes, the homies, yes. boy. Yo, yo, for real, for real. This he just song, dropped some knowledge on that shit right there. That was fine. The song is hard body. The track is dope. Yeah. He shouts Brooklyn. He shouts Chicago. He shouts Natural E. Like this is this is fire. Yeah, Stretch yeah, and yeah. Bob. Yeah, yeah. Word, word, right. All right, let's get, into, uh, let's get into let's get into the next joint called uh, Olympic. All right. All right, that's fire. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, super yeah, fire. Yeah. Yo, shout that guitar, out to that beat is hard. Diamond did his thing on that. Yo, he surely did, man. The bass line was, was crazy. Tough too. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. Country. The bass line. <laughs> For sure. Uh, let's let's keep it moving. The quiet one featuring the infamous Buster Rhymes. Uh oh. Uh, yeah. The quiet one. <laughs> <laughs> this sound like. Oh, come on, man. What is he doing right now? I know. I know. Come on. Come on. Shoot. All right. Press play. Become. Become. Yeah. I just I just want to point out that both Yo. uh Quali and Busta said something about a 76er. Sixers! I just wanted to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo That's shot. fire. Yo, Busta, that's another one like who's been in the game for super long, as well as Quali, right? Not so we had busted not, earlier. Not, though. Well, yeah, Quali yeah, said he, it in his he's, verse. He's he said older. I've been here since ninety one. So what right. mm -hmm. Busta's like out. They like what eighty nine? Yeah, yeah. Leaders I would say something like that. Leaders yeah. of the new, but yeah. like okay. two people that have been in the game for quite a long time and never lost their ability to flow and you know rap with like super skill. Right, you know right. what I mean? Right, right, right. Stay up to date and current and competitive. Right, right, right. With, yeah, yeah. All right, right. that was fire. Let's keep oh, going. Oh, hold up, I just gotta say. Yeah. On that track, because you know when we were playing it. We got hype when Buster started rhyming. Like we were like, because sometimes you were like, is Buster gonna bust a rhyme this one? Mm -hmm. And two bars, three bars, four, we all were like, ah, oh, right. 
And yeah. so I got to give him an extra shout because Quali's verse was not low energy or whack by any means. I was when he was rhyming, I was like, oh, Talib is killing it. And then yeah, when yeah, Russ yeah. came in, I cannot remember Talib's verse anymore. <laughs> I was like, did he rhyme before? You're being That's how crazy. His album. Um, no, <laughs> he, he, he was fire, but Busta brings that energy sometimes, not always. Hey, on this record, listen, he brought that that's, energy. that's what you get a Busta Rhymes feature for, yes, right? Yes. It's like yeah. for, him, for him to be Busta Rhymes. Let's keep moving. Great song. Um, great song. On Mama's yeah. track four. I thought about it the other day. I'm so glad I was going. Yo. Yo, yo, no. I like yo. this album. We're, yo, we're only we four tracks like in. Five well, deep. We're, right? we're getting the five now. Okay, okay. Before Let's you go. go to any more songs, I got to yeah. say, because Wild Child reacted to, to Diamond in the middle of that. Like, what is he doing? He got keyboards. He got bass lines. Diamond D is letting everyone know, hey, by the way, this is not Diamond D from the best kept secret. It's 2021. <laughs> like my beats are are crazy fire right now on and i got new stuff y'all never heard of he's yo doing he's he's, he's things that i never heard from him that, like, and not for nothing no nah, he's crazy. super slept on diamonds done a lot he is yeah, yeah he's just the best lot, kept man. secret <laughs> but he also and he's a dope mc yeah, on yeah. top of it yeah 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 he needs yeah, to get yeah. his flowers definitely so yeah, for yeah, yeah. for the audience to know if you want to hear us rocking out and listening to the joints and everything that we can't play on YouTube, go to our Patreon. That's where you get the bonus content. Yo, Kwali, I'm going to call you. Um, I'm going to need that instrumental. Yo. Yeah, we're going to need those, <laughs> instru we gonna need those instrumentals. <laughs> hey, Wild Child said he wanted to rhyme on that last Listen. one. Right? What track is it? Mamas the, on Mamas? That was the one. The next track is called Attention Span featuring Sky Zoo. Big shout out to Sky Zoo. He's got a new album coming out. And if you don't know, I got a song with Sky Zoo, PH, Rusty Jux, and Shot Stimuli called County right. Kings. Came right, out right. um came out years ago. But right. the video is on our on our site. It's super fire. Sky Zoo is the man. He's been super consistent um with with you know his drops and releases. And you know, he's a he's a Brooklyn dude like us. So it's let's get channel. into this. Yeah, attention span featuring Sky Zoo. Yeah, they getting too slimy. Liable to make this peace, brother, turn grimy. I'm out now. Bet your hands be up. Fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sky Zoo. Nah, I like that. Sky Zoo is super consistent with. Yeah, he's got a nice voice, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's got a nice voice. He's very, um, his style has a lot of, um, feeling of soul to it i guess like you can tell like he he listens to old music mm -hmm. not that his style is dated at all but you know when you, you you like you feel like there's soul in it there's um yeah 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 even when you listen to his albums like you know you know he listened to a lot of jazz and he knows a lot about music and mm -hmm. you know music theory and, and all of that it's not just yo i rap you know what i mean oh uh, yeah he's got a background yeah Anyway, um, let's keep going in due time featuring Neri Aldai, I believe. I hope I'm not saying that wrong, but it might be. In due time. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Super fire, man. I like that. I think yeah, it's pretty. I think it's pronounced I like that a lot, man. Yeah. Say, so say Genji. I think it's pronounced all day. Now, when I look at it, I'm like, is that a creative way to say Neary all day? Neary all day. Neary yeah, you're probably like right. Maybe. Probably right. She's, I like that, man. she's dope, man. MC she's and, really dope. and singer. She's super dope. You know what I'm saying? You can tell she's a, a, a spoken word artist. Right. Yeah. She's kind of, even when she was singing in the beginning, it was written as like an MC type of verse that she was singing it. Yeah, yeah man. I wouldn't right, be surprised. Go ahead, bro. Uh, next joint is Pick Up Your Head featuring John Forte. The homie. Just who do you think you are, boy? That the status thrive. Dope. Damn it. Dope. Yo, John Forte. Quali yeah. flow like this. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Forte yeah, yeah. flow like this. Hmm. They like that. <laughs> totally different styles on the same beat. Yeah, that's dope, man. So it's, it's like it just shows you like the tenacity of of Diamond D, mm -hmm. right? He brings he can bring that out of different artists, you know. 
different approaches. You know, we hear things a certain way, you know, mm-hmm. everybody hears it differently and they, you know, they express themselves. That's dope about his production, man. Yeah. Word. Uh, hit, hit Diamond D, send us some beats now. <laughs> yeah, hit Diamond D. Yeah. Come on, son, come on. Son. We, got, we, got th- we got three to go. Chilling Wild Black, check it. Yeah, man, dope, yeah. dope. Crazy, man. You know what? Like, you know, he, he, it's dope that he is as dope as the lyricist as he is and is able to at the same time, you know, there's not enough hip hop that's giving you um, social commentary or, you know, talking about, you know, things wrong in the world. And like we, you know, we played earlier, we played proxy. That's why I made proxy. Like, the, you know, the, these type of songs need to be heard. And he does it in the same way I feel like proxy was where it's like kind of like almost a Trojan horse into, you know, yeah. that because it's not just like super, super all the time in your face. But it's there, you know what I'm saying? And once True. you hear it, it's in your head. You paid attention already, whether you right wanted up. to or not. And it's harder um, to do that as an MC. So both you and he and other MCs who can give a message and not be corny, you know, because it's harder to write. It's easier to write, oh, I thought of a hot punchline or I'm a brag about myself. It's harder to be like, I got to say this important shit. Yeah. And But the yeah. flow has to be equal to yeah. all those other rhymes you know yeah. what i mean and shout it's still, out, shout still out still to, to everybody that does that wild child has songs like that g you got songs like that um yeah. you know uh kendrick black thought you know this yeah. is so this so man who set that whole style off is who melly mel right that yeah. was the first time that was ever the done message. the yeah. message yeah. is on point for sure now some people over the years have tried it but it's hard to make it musically appealing and lyrically appealing at the same time but those those people that get that um for sure man for sure really voice oh, of the dope. people all right we got two more let's keep going i'll tell you later featuring nico is yeah this is the mcmi report come on man it's diamond deep man <laughs> <laughs> He's talking to me. Oh, man. That's right. Donna Dash to those who trying to fast. Super dope, man. I love it. You know, and just listening to this, right, gets me hyped because, like we were talking about earlier, they got this, um, the podcast coming with, you know, uh, Dave Chappelle and Yasin Bey. And, yeah. you know, that that's just going to further, um, uplift his right. their, their um their audience right. for when the next black star album comes out you know which yeah is not only that it's gonna is. open up the platform for other artists like similar you know yeah yeah it's gonna be dope man. this album is covering yeah. a lot of stuff that we're talking about in the mcmi report today you know? that's what's up man for sure we've got next? one more what joint got? one more joint called the fold cool yeah I told you I've been nice. Fire. That yeah, was yeah, dope, crazy. man. Yo, the album is dope. Listen, um, I'm just uh, doing more research on it now. Once again, Gotham, the album by Taleb Kweli and Diamond D Diamond. is out now um, on J- Javadi Media. Um, it's on all streaming platforms. Um, yeah, Taleb has, Taleb has a, a super dope um, podcast called um, The People's Party. You should check that out. Uh, there is a video out for um, Attention Span, the joint with Sky Zoo and Diamond D. I haven't seen it, but mm-hmm. um, I'm, I'm seeing that there's a video out for that. Okay. Um, he has a new book out. He put he just put out a book. Quali did. Quali. Okay. Yes, he just okay. put a book out. He's doing a lot, man. He's having he's definitely having a big year. So definitely. That's dope, man. Him. It's 360 for him, right? Because his parents had was it the, the Nakuru bookstore? It was his bookstore. No, that was him. It? He yeah, worked him. there and then he bought it. I believe yeah. that was him. I thought it was his folks. You gotta place. have him on the show. It's yeah, yeah. The stuff. Get the Talib, book. you gotta come on the show, bro. Yeah. For sure. But I, but I mean, sure. if he's if he's right, if he came out in '91, I don't know. Is that too early for him, or was '91 around when he dropped his first? Uh, Single, I mean, independent. I, I, I would, I would think that means he's been doing it for thirty years. Yeah, a thirty-year career artist, you know, and uh, still rocking, still dropping albums like this. You know what I'm saying? Yo, quality albums, right? Yo, it's not, it's not even like pun intended. Like, <laughs> quality, <laughs> definitely, definitely, <albums>. definitely. <laughs> like he reached, he reached back, you know, 
to like a pillar in the hip hop community, right? As far as music goes, right? He reached back to get that and bring that essence out. I, I love it, man. I love Take his album. From Diamond. Yeah, dope stuff, man. Definitely, uh, if you want more on him, you can go to any of his uh, insanely volatile um, social medias. It's all <laughs> under his name, Talib Kweli, right? Because there's always a lot going on. Like he gets at it, man. You don't don't say don't say no racist, you know, stuff on, on Kweli's page. He, he's he's gonna get you for it. Yeah. Um, you don't hold his but, tongue. Uh, mm -hmm. No, he de definitely doesn't hold his tongue. Speaking for the on, people, on, so. Yeah, um, on, on Wax or, you know, on, on the Twitter sphere. But check out his uh, website, uh, talibkweli.com, for all the information and news on him and his goings on. That was super dope. I like the album a lot. Shout out to Diamond D. Um, yeah, man, quality all work. The features, that... All the features, too, were dope. And that it was, was a first listen, guys. Like, we didn't, we didn't know what we was getting into, and it just, Burn. you know. We could we could have been like, oh, this is trash, but it's not trash. <laughs> it is not trash. Album is fire, so uh, congrats yeah, to up. him. Word, for sure. So let's get let's get into some more new music. So next up, I believe that's me. <laughs> GMS, what GMS up? GMS in the building. So what you um, got? Next up, uh, another friend of ours, someone that we work with in the industry, known for mad years, just dropped a really uh, cool solo album. Big Zoo from EO Dub. Shout out to EO Dub. Three Kings. Him, most pro most prolific. R.I.P. Vice versus Vice. Vice, Vice. Love you, Jason. Um, but Zoo dropped uh, a solo album. We got a couple of features on there. I'm tell you about them. Mm -hmm. Now I haven't heard the whole album yet. I'm just digging into it. But the first two singles I have heard, and I like those joints. The album's called No Beast So Fierce. Welcome to the Zoo. Mm -hmm. And the singles are The Butters, which features Most Pro. Or I think it just goes by Prolific One. No. The Butters. Mm -hmm. I'm called, you know, when you know someone a long time, you call them by their old name from back in the day. Propane. Word. But um, Prolific. And uh, the other single, which is also a video, is Black Woman. Mm -hmm. That's the first one that I saw. I, I don't know if they came out in that order, but I saw a Black Woman video mm -hmm. um, when I was just going through some stuff at Pop. Nah, okay, when the, your video the, dropped. The, the Butters definitely came out first. I remember that was the first single, and he had he had uh -huh. the hoodies for it, and everything. It's dope. Right, right. I, I remember also hearing the buzz about the Butters yet, but I hadn't heard it yet. I was yeah. people were like, "Oh, the Butters came out it was the fire." But um, I like those joints. The, the video for the Butters is is shot really cinematography, like I don't know, I'm not using the words right. Cinematically, um, they're walking around the city, and there's a lot of you know ill shots of them walking a little bit slow mo, and uh, they're just doing the rhymes. They get lyrical, but they also get conscious on that joint, mm -hmm. um, which seems to be, you know, Zoo's specialty. He's like one of those artists we were mentioning that, you know, he, he can rhyme. He's got the ill voice for being an MC. He's got a dope freestyle. His ly his lyricism is on point, and he also is conscious, and he, he doesn't beat you over the head with it. He throws in every now and again a four bar, and you're like, oh, we really said some shit right there. Yeah. So, um, thanks to him for that. Real quick, just to um, get expound some more, uh, Big Zoo is the one of the founding members of EOW, which is End of the Week. End of the Week um, started here in New York City and is probably the longest running weekly um, hip hop showcase um, of all time. Live and, show. Yeah, and uh, you know him and his and his two partners, which was Pro and Vice, they would host the show every week for years and years and years, every Sunday, because it's the right. end of the week and also right. end of the week MCs. Um, so and they, then, you know, after a while, other hosts also got brought into the fold. Yeah, yeah, and, and mm -hmm. carried a mantle, you know. Right, but um, you know, they took they took this um this platform all over the world, and they have chapters in you know so many cities. Um, in so many countries Word and up. a lot of that um, had to do with the um, ideas and the visions of you know the MC challenge that uh, Vice had come up with uh, a lot of the segments if not the whole thing and um, you know it was um, a year since since Vice passed uh, mm -hmm. just just um, last week and they EOW and the people that that do EOW shout out to you know um, uh, J James Calhoun and uh, you know Vanguard, all of, all, all, yeah yeah Ben Max all, words word, Sarah all of those Connor guys supports yeah. that movement. There's so many people. Yeah, Dominoes. There's there's a ton. Angela but, Thomas. Yeah. But um the 
what I, the, they have a thing called the vice first vice versus foundation and they um looked to give grants to a bunch of uh artists that are you know trying to get a foothold in in the music industry and they had a big eo zoom they have this thing called eo zoom now since covid where mm -hmm. they have basically a whole zoom channel where they you know have shows and they gave out these grants to the to the winners and they played music from the winners and a lot of people that were runner ups. And I got to listen to a lot of that music. And I, you know, I started following a lot of these MCs and, and songwriters cause it was really dope. Right. So, you know, again, definitely shout out to, I just wanted to throw all that in there, but definitely shout out to um, big zoo Word. for his album and um, you know, all the work that they do over there at EOW. That's I dope, mean, man. Big... Pioneers. Yeah. yeah big zoo I mean? was one of the leaders of that movement. And uh, I'm glad we got to, to shout out Vice as well, because he pioneered the challenge, like you said, he pioneered or and pushed them to go international, right? He had this phrase global, I told you, right? Mm -hmm. And he went all around the world spreading this, I think it's in 13 countries, and I could I could be off by the number mm -hmm. if I wanted to, but. That's crazy. You know, w is all over the world now, sanctioned by them doing, you know, official. Yep. And um, it's great, it gives new artists an opportunity to yeah, um, practice and perform in front of their peers and get feedback. Exactly. Right. Challenges and stuff and so on. Right. Shouts to Big Zoo. Next up. Next up, I believe that's me. <laughs> Yo, so I don't know if anybody knows about this. You guys probably already know, but the legendary Roots crew, they mm -hmm. are reissuing a remastered version of Do You Want More, the, the classic album. Their first major release album was their second Man. album. was yes, their first major yes. release album. Um, and they released it in 95. It got like five mics or, you know, and it got like, like the source Four put it as like <laughs> top, top, you know, in the top tier of, of, of classic albums, right? So it's all curated by Quest Love, of course, right? Yeah, but they've yeah. got like bonus tracks on it, right? So you got all the reg regular original tracks and then you got bonus stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So the bonus tracks uh that feature Roy Ayers, right? Nice. They got mm. and they got Proceed Two, right, with Roy Ayers. And they pro Proceed Three, then they got Proceed Four with AJ wow. Shine Mix. They got Beat Miners mix on this bad nice. boy, right? Yeah. Silent Treatment. They did like five different versions on it, right? When Silent got, Treatment came out, it had five versions. I remember- This that, is five a, more. <laughs> Yo, so then they got like um, essays by Questlove and, and Black Thought, and then they got track by track commentary, yeah. which is crazy, yeah. right? Yeah. This is crazy. So it's, it drops, it's supposed to drop the 28th of May, right? And it's a three, they pressed it. It's a, it's a, it's a it's album. Vinyl. vinyl. Yeah, it's yeah. vinyl. So it's, it's three, Vinyls, right? I'm buying it. You say it like that? I'm buying yeah. it. Yeah, man, it's crazy. You know, hey, I, you know, I don't want to get off track too much, right? But I remember, I remember, right? Leaving from, what was it? The New Wait, Music man? Seminar? No. Oh. New Music Seminar, the one where Craig G battled um, Supernat? Yes, that summer. Okay, so and stop. Bad Boy one. Yeah. Time, out, time out, time out. Time out. Was it the New Music Seminar or was it the Music Conference? I can't remember the name of, of what the event was. It was the Lyricist Lounge. No, no. It wasn't a New Music Seminar. It was probably hosted or, or promoted by the Lyricist Lounge. So it was a conference. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. So whatever the name of it was, um, we went there at the Sheraton, right? right. All three of us are there. Right. Um, it was it was one of the biggest nights in hip hop history to me, right? Yeah, yeah, because to totally because you had you first you have you, you walk in and you see these guys holding these giant signs that say Big Mac on them, right? Big Mac and, on and it, and yeah. they have actual they have actual Big People. Mac boxes, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, and you open it and there's a a real bun, right? All right. With, with, a with with letters and a tape inside that had Biggie on one side and Craig Mack on the other. Gen Mac. Genius marketing, right? Yeah, by, by, by the, by the cats at Bad Boy. No one can forget that. But when right. at, at the same time that we're getting that tape, I also got, right, the sampler for The Roots, Distortion the Static. Yeah, for, for Do You Want More? And it had right. Proceed on one side and Distortion the Static on the other. That was it. Maybe an instrumental or, or an acapella, right, something right, like that. Right, but right, those two right. songs, right? And right, right. that night, again, Craig Knight, Craig, Craig, um, Craig G battled Supernat. Yeah. I, I almost battled one of the Bush Babies. Um, yeah, yeah. DCQ. DC, smack D, DCQ punches, punches the, the sound man, right? I gotta say, I gotta say 
I always a lot of people don't know that last part because it happened way at the end of the night. They were trying to shut right, it down, right. close down, right, right, right. you know, and the battle had happened. So that eclipsed the news. Everyone was talking about. Yeah. Superman. But for me, it's the it's like this. The Big Mac promotion. Right. Craig G versus Supernet. DCQ right, right. hit the sound man. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And Yo. if, if for you guys that don't know who DCQ is, DCQ is the brother of Yasin Bey, a.k.a. Most Def, right? And they were true, in a group. True. They were in a group Medina together. Green. Yeah. Yeah. So. They um, were in UTDs before that. But then. Yeah. The next group was Medina Green. Right. right they, yeah. UTDs. Um, yeah, yeah. Urban, urban oh. Thermodynamics was the group. Right. And they, right. they, they were all together. Um, but man, what a night. But night. just, just, just. I say all that to say that when I listen to those two songs, so that's the first time I ever heard the roots. Um, when I listen to those, it all back. when I, yeah, I remember coming home from that night being so pumped because it was such a hip hop night and I, I'm yeah, a little yeah. kid, right? You know, I'm not, I'm not that old back then. And it's just like, that was like super hip hop to me. And yeah, I come yeah, home I and I put in this cassettes, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. To listen <laughs> to, uh, you know, I listened to the Biggie and the Craig Mack first. Cause you know, I, I, I know those names. But then I put in this tape and I'm like, holy shit. Yo, and then on top of that, Mark Echo, right? They had their shirt. He had his shirts. And if you got his shirt, you got to live in this lounge tape. The tape, yeah, yeah. All around that same crazy. time period. Yeah. So that's cool because you're talking about where were you when the Roots first released this and what was going yeah, on, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's why I that. have to buy it because it's super and, nostalgia to me. And right. it's just that's amazing. That's where we were. That's yeah. exactly where we were. Yeah. I have a couple of memories that, cause I was DJing at Brooklyn College, WBCR, and so I would get um, promo records sent, you know, free music, you fill yeah. out requests, I'm from the radio station. Right. And so I got Distortion the Static with the instrumentals. Yeah, I got like six different singles off that album with instrumentals. And that's why I know like Silent Treatment came with six tracks on the vinyl. One right. was an instrumental and five were all different beats and remixes and versions. And that was the first time I'd ever noticed that like a group coming out with crazy multiple verses completely different beat and black yeah. thought would change the lyrics slightly they didn't right. take the acapellas and put it on a new beat he did right, the right. verses again and right, he might right. change a line here or there just subtly like it was he said this on the first record but he was like ah change that last word yeah. right, right, right. but you knew he did it over it wasn't an acapella yeah. remix right and so you know what they kind of like i would say that the roots are like pioneers also absolutely you know what I mean? Absolutely. Hell yeah. Hell like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So uh, many different uh, uh, things. They're not the first hip hop band because, like, you know, I would give that like Stetsa, like Stetsa, Stetsa, right? For sure. But these guys came and they transcended, you know, the art form, you know, and really put like really thought and effort into, pun intended, the, the, <laughs> they really put thought and effort into the lyricism, you know what I mean? Yeah. The delivery, you know, you know, the, the, the concepts, the roots yeah. of the music. And 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 on, on, on top of all of that, right? On top of all of that, a lyricist who's a true lyricist that you, you just can't you can't take that out of them, right? Like a Royce, like a Pharaoh, like a black thought. These these are people that are in my top five of all time. And they're just as dope now as they were when I first heard them, if not doper. Like these yeah, these yeah. MCs that really, really get to their pen. That's and, something too, because like I wanna say for me, it feels like you should get better as you you progress in time as an MC because your vocabulary expands, right. you have more knowledge, you get more wisdom, more experiences, and you're able to, you know, speak truth to power, right? Yeah. Or any artist should, right? In any genre. So hip hop should be like that too. It should always be a progression but i also want to um add in before we we go, we go out of this segment um malik is on this album heavy mm. so pete when he passed away he hadn't really been on the group with the group for a while so he wasn't on the last few um roots albums and people who became roots fans in the middle of their career yeah mm -hmm. the second half they were like oh malik who's, who's that you know yeah, they right, think right, of the right, roots right, right. is all right, the right. instruments quest love and, and black, black, black thought, thought as the mc but yeah for, right. for several albums it was two of them and they were both right. equally yeah. fire and, and they did interplay back and, and forth with their styles and, and that's and, on this album. yeah and rozelle and dice raw all that's of that right. you know what i mean so, like, oh yeah and scott storch is all over this he's all over because he was the there like original right. keyboards yeah yeah that's how i think that's how i think that's his first hip-hop gig right yeah for sure was coming out with the roots and then he yep. started producing more other stuff later right. yeah yeah so what a, what a classic uh 
time in hip hop. Yeah, I'm excited. Yes, yes. But if you are young and you didn't, you weren't here for that, or you just weren't following the roots back then, um, you definitely, definitely should pick up this album and get this. It's not going to sound like anything on their last three albums because right, their right. styles change over the years so with each album. They so progress. Yeah. yeah so when, after if you that see was them different. on Jimmy Fallon, it's not the same. No. <laughs> hey, guys, listen. Um, you can find out any information you need about this project and the roots in general. Most likely you can find out uh, everything on okplayer.com. Um, they have tons of awesome merch uh, besides for the, the albums. And um, also maybe hopefully this year, fingers crossed, there'll be a roots picnic this year as well. Their, their annual uh, festival that they do last year, they did it virtually. Uh, mm -hmm. online and it was still really dope but it, there's nothing like being at you know in philly for uh, a roots picnic and, indeed, and, and, and all their all their their friends come out and perform with them because they got a lot of friends <laughs> they do got a lot of friends um, i'm looking forward to that and who doesn't hey. want to rock with the roots you know we yeah. got to rock with their, them playing a couple times yeah. at wetlands, wetlands. We used to yeah. do their events in new york and they used to invite mcs from from where they're at you know hey yeah. come up and rock with us and we used to we used to jam with them it was dope yeah man um definitely so that's new music guys um we got we had a lot of good ones this week and we'll yeah, have yeah. more for you next week but let right now we're gonna take a break and we'll be back with the mcmi war zone <sighs> yeah we back man mcmi war zone is the subject and for today we are talking about one of the dopest verses that ever happened even though it wasn't really a versus but it was on the versus <laughs> platform um yeah. Uh, Red Man yep. and Method Man, the Blunt Brothers, the Blackout Team, uh, you know, the duo from Def Jam, they they had their 420 uh, special. And, um, you know, it was great because it was the same date that the uh, Derek Chauvin uh, uh, verdict came through. And Which it was 420. Right. Holiday. It, it would have been a lot different watching this if the verdict went a different way so right. it was it was great to go from that to have something to actually celebrate right, right. you know you get to... you, you, you get your little weed or whatever because it's 420 and and you know new york has new weed laws or whatever yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and, and and sit and sit back and watch this amazing concert yo uh next up and, and i believe that's me yeah. and yo so it was like you know, like you said and I have to quote you, right? Because Rod was like, you know, it was meth and red and their amazing friends. Yeah, right? man. Which is crazy when you think about it, because this is like hip hop pedigree. You know, we had meth from the Wu Tang. He brought he brought Deck out there. He brought mm -hmm. Capadonna out there, right? Rizzo. You had, you know, and yeah, and Rizzo, right? Yeah. And they was just doing joints, and 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 you had. Red Man and his whole hit squad, Death Squad crew, so you know, Paris Smith, Eric Sermon, Keith Murray, wow. K Solo came out. Yeah, they did that. The My whole, big brother, they did the that entire drink. headbanger fam. They it's did the whole thing. Yo, I was um, waiting for that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, they had DJ Cool come out and do Clear My Throat. Yeah, um, and then wow. on, on to back them up, it was DJ Scratch. Yeah, yeah. So this was very DJ. different because I don't think anyone's ever done that. Like they've had Meta had a guest or something if they did a song with them, I don't know, but they were just doing their own songs. Besides the Red and Meth songs battling each other, there was these other guest performances yeah. that weren't right, it, right, it, right. It really, always, it, right? It really was just one big concert instead of like my song, your song, my song, your song. They even in between all of the songs was playing like old, like, you know, soul classics. Yes. It and was then so they had dope. costume changes. Yo, wow. fam. Wow. When 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 Method Man went into the garbage can, right, and Red Man kneeled down and he put the cape on him and started doing Superman Lover, like, come on, that is showmanship. That's my remember, favorite like, Superman. That's my favorite. He's got like six of them. That's of my course. favorite one, number three. Of course, That's my remember, favorite re one. Remember last week we said that we said, "Yo, wonder if they'll do Superman." We do one of those, I and know, we're like, I "He should." That. And then we were like, "Yo, I hope he does." They probably do number one, and then you're like, "Nah, number nah. three. You know, So we were, we were, you know, frothing at the bit for this Red and Meth <laughs> meetup. You know, look, we don't I have a disappointment. We don't have a lot of time, but I just want to get into another awesome story, right? Yeah, I okay. remember, I remember the day, 
that I first heard the headbanger, right? And for them for them to do that at the end of the show was amazing. Me right. and Keith were in the back of my parents' um, uh, station Ooh, yeah. wagon, gray station okay. wagon, right? I can't okay. remember, with the suicide doors. Right, 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 right. Crown Victoria. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. We, we are coming, we're in the back, maroon seats, right? We're coming back from uh, Six Flags, right? And, oh yeah, great and we, we had I think we had our own radio in the back. And we yeah, were listening yeah. to whatever radio station and the headbanger came on and I lost it, right? Like mm -hmm. I was like, yo, this is the dopest thing I ever heard in my life. Mm -hmm. And that's when, mm -hmm. that's when I was like, yo, I need to have a crew as sick as this. Like if I ever become a rapper, I need to have a crew as sick as this crew. And yeah. I named my crew the sickest thing I could think of, the plague, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so so it was that, that, that if, it, if not for that song, right? Our, the friendships that we have with so many dope MCs probably would have been different because we never would have, we, us three would have never went to, you know, grab all of these people who right, become right. like our lifelong friends. So that song right. means so much to me, the headbanger, man. Yeah, but yeah, um, yeah. It, it, it was just a dope time to watch. It was just dope. The only time I want to add real quick, the only time I got to actually see them live to do that was with you guys at the Nokia Theater. Mm. In yes, York that City. was a great day. We, yeah. And we were with a lot of those friends, right? Yeah. Who in the plague was there at that? Uh, I mean, Pac, 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 P, no, Pain. PH was with us. Um, PH was with us. Pim was there. Pim. Yeah, there was a Who lot else? of people, man. Was a, a lot, lot of, of people. I think yeah. Immortal Technique was there too. Yeah, it might have been. I think so. I think so. That was great. But I've seen um, Red and Meth live uh, maybe three or four times, if not more. Y'all saw him at that BBQs, right? Um, so I'm at BBQs, yep. I think twice I, th I might've seen him at BBQs. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, they they are the best uh, live show in terms of energy, in terms of getting the songs across the way that you, that you wanna hear them, in terms of like getting the crowd into it. Uh, they just this it's hard to beat them in a, in a live show man if there's something for them to climb on they're gonna climb up to as as far as they can go like I've seen meth climb like 13 feet in the air and rap wow. hanging from like some scaffolding like wow. they do they you know stage diving they're crazy and and the songs every song is dope yeah man every and song start, is and they, dope and they started it off with a new original song right they so or that they have together yeah I believe that was the first no, no. record they played right wasn't wasn't, wasn't something new okay mm -mm. but they didn't they play one of they premiered something new because they have an album coming out together no they don't they don't well they got they they, they said they got they working on black working on an album. listen listen hold on a second right watch watch the video um scratch i think scratch says something about it and method man is like oh yeah we doing another one and and oh, he's right. not yeah. and he's and he's and he's not kidding he's he's like okay like I, if we do another one i guess we're doing another one right, red, right, man, right. red man red man does have muddy waters 2 coming out mm -hmm. um in in the summertime but uh, as as far as you know and trust me i searched this thoroughly there's no right. mention of them anywhere about okay uh, okay, okay. A new, a maybe new we do just... know that scratch and, and rizza got a joint right right they did a they whole album him. together I guess he was just oh. feeling excited and was like, "Yeah, we're black out three. Go. Yeah. All right. Anyway, Yo, that was dope. Yeah, for Blitz, sure. Let's take us out. Go yeah, ahead. man. So that's the MCMI report for this week. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell for the notifications. Play the horn. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got we gotta get our sound effects going, right? Know, but um, <laughs> but yo, follow MC My Report on Instagram, um, on Twitter, on Facebook. Uh, follow all three of us. Um, you know, check out all the other podcasts. I right, so boom. Uh, levels up uh, Mondays with Wild Child on his IG that that'll be coming to uh, YouTube as well. Uh, GMS his, his Cyber Sky podcast. We got a lot going on. Um, like I said, with um, I so boom, we're wrapping up. Uh, we talk about nerd shit right now. We're wrapping up Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We'll be talking about the uh, Invincible cartoon. Loki's coming up. There's a lot of things, movies, all of that. Once again, I am LR Blitzkrieg. I'm the Wicked Wild Child, and this is GMS. <laughs> 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 that was long and drawn out alright until next time in hip hop we trust this is the MCMI report we out peace peace it's still holding my jewels <laughs> <laughs>